Not too long ago, I told Gordon Ramsay I'd be visiting his restaurant to taste and critique his famous beef wellington. He came back with a simple message. Hey Nick, it's me, your favorite chef. Ready on, big boy. His beef wellington was good, but the star of the meal was actually his equally famous sticky toffee pudding. It's widely known as Gordon's signature dessert, and he is said to have some variation of it in every single one of his restaurants throughout the world. When we recently spent an entire day eating at Gordon Ramsay's restaurants in Las Vegas, we tried several of these desserts. One of them was even in the form of a milkshake. Here comes our first bite, and I'm gonna dive in. And a little bit more of that sauce. Honestly, that's the best bite of the day. Now, for those of you that don't know, sticky toffee pudding is a British sponge cake dessert with a toffee sauce often served with vanilla ice cream. Today, we'll attempt to perfectly recreate Gordon Ramsay's sticky toffee pudding with the recipe right off his website. And I mean, Gordon. I'm not trying to give you a hard time, but I'm pretty confident ours will look better than this. And speaking of Gordon, if you didn't know, we are rapidly catching up to him in subscribers. About 50% of you watching right now aren't subscribed. So those of you that aren't, please smack that button so we can catch up to him. Time to cook. We'll begin by making the pudding itself. To begin, we'll rough chop three quarters of a cup of dates, all of which have the pits removed. Now we'll toss these into a bowl, then pour over some boiling water until they're fully submerged. Then press them down with a spoon and let them sit for about 10 minutes. Follow with a half teaspoon of baking soda. It smells like oatmeal. Now for step number two, into our stand mixer, we'll add three tablespoons of unsalted soft butter, as well as six tablespoons of light brown sugar. Ideally, you'll want to use a paddle attachment, but I'm pretty sure Manny stole ours, so this is the best we've got. Yes, you did. Then we close this down and beat for one minute until fluffy. At this point, we'll reduce the heat to medium and add one egg. Then beat again until well combined. Then with the mixer on low, add one half cup plus two tablespoons all-purpose flour, plus one half teaspoon baking powder, and mix till combined. Now for step number three, preheat your oven to 350 Fahrenheit. And step number four, we'll put our dates into our blender, along with that quarter cup of boiling water that is soaked up, and puree into a nice paste. Now we'll combine in our date puree, which I will say if you're making just one portion of sticky toffee pudding is a pain in the ass to blend and blend once more to combine. Now for step number five, we're gonna grease and flour our cocottes. I'll be honest, I have absolutely no idea how you say this, but whatever you're baking in, make sure to butter and then flour. Start by going around the edge with butter to make sure you coat every little nook and cranny, and feel free to wipe with a paper towel to help you out. Then we'll dust it all around with flour and make sure to shake around to coat every last edge. Eventually, we'll flip upside down, give it a nice spank. You're fired, get out. And it should be perfectly coated. Now finally, in goes our batter. Now into our preheated oven we go for about 17 to 19 minutes. While our pudding bakes, let's jump to step number seven. We'll start with one half cup unsalted butter, one cup of packed brown sugar, two tablespoons of milk, two tablespoons of heavy cream, two tablespoons of corn syrup, and I think you know what we're gonna put next. A little pinch of Osmo, my favorite flaky salt ever, and then bring to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, let this go for about three minutes. Pro tip, I'm gonna thaw my ice cream a little bit so that it's nice and soft for when it's time to serve. Once it's been going for three minutes, turn off the heat and add in two tablespoons of bourbon, and then stir to combine. Allow this to cool, and you'll be left with a beautiful, sticky toffee sauce. After following Gordon's recipe to a tea, our first variation of our sticky toffee pudding came out looking something like this. <laughs> Perhaps the worst muffin you've ever seen in your entire life. But we weren't about to give up that easily. <laughs> After doing some research with myself and cameraman Manny, we eventually found that baking it and then steaming it would give us something like this. Now finally, to finish things off, I'll add a nice scoop of vanilla ice cream. Then I'll light up my toffee sauce and pour it all over my sticky toffee pudding. Gordon, you should light yours on fire too. If you look carefully at the instructions, it says to serve this immediately. I won't argue with that. You've heard enough from me. Let's hear what Manny has to say. Let's see if Gordon lives up to the hype. Oh, it's really good. That was as good as mine. Well, there you have it, Gordon Ramsay's Sticky Toffee Pudding. It certainly took us a bit of trial and error, but give it a shot at home and let us know in the comments below how it went for you. Happy cooking. Hey Nick, I got your birthday present. What is this? So it's a limited edition Ratatouille hat. What? Try it on. What?